Hi friends, on this episode of Due to the Travel Bug, we are crisscrossing the state of Alaska and bringing you our top 10 must-eats, because Alaska is for the wild at heart and the hungry. So, where are we going today? We are going to eat all the things. All the things. All the things. We are here to eat everything in Alaska. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Let's go. Not more time. Our first stop takes us to historic Talkeetna. Talkeetna will appear more than once on this list. It's a great place for foodies and adventurers because it's located at the base of Denali, the highest peak in the U.S. This quirky town is also the inspiration for the show Northern Exposure. So number 10 on our list is fireweed ice cream at Shirley's Northern Lights. Fireweed is a hardy plant that in the summertime paints the Alaskan scenery pink and purple with little flowers. Fireweed gets its name because it's the first thing to pop up after a big wildfire. Fireweed in ice cream gives it a pink jewel color and a unique taste that is floral yet fruity. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good. Want me to smile for you? Yes, I do. I, I, I'll do that, but don't go down to the post office and look at all them pictures <laughs> hanging on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> number nine! Our number nine has us traveling way north to Healy, Alaska to the 49th State Brewery. What do you got there, Jim? I have a yak burger. Very good. Got gouda and some caramelized onions I and stuff on it. I got, I got reindeer pizza. Reindeer pizza made with real reindeer. Now the food here is great, but it made our list for the beer. 49 State Brews are handcrafted in Alaska with a big menu of unique flavors. And let's be honest, beer just tastes better when your surroundings are this amazing. The magic bus from the movie Into the Wild is located out front, and it's an exact replica of the bus Christopher McCandless lived and died in on his big Alaskan adventure. In fact, the brewery is located just down the street from the Stampede Trailhead, the trail that took Chris to his magic bus. Guests are welcome to board the bus to see pictures and notes from McCandless and to take photo ops. Number eight. Our number eight spot takes us to Anchorage to a cheerful food truck. International House of Hot Dogs specializes in gourmet hot dogs from around the world. Their menu is fun, but make no mistake, we are here for the Alaskan dog. The Alaskan dog is made with reindeer sausage. It contains a high proportion of meat, just the right amount of spices, and a juicy snap when you bite into it. Number seven. Next on the list is a bit of a surprise, and not because of the lethal amounts of sodium in it, but Alaskans love Span Musubi. This Hawaiian way to eat a fried piece of Spam with rice and seaweed has even found its way into Alaska's gas stations. There's a surprising number of Pacific Islanders in Alaska, and they brought their love of scrumptious processed Musubi. Mmm. Very good. Number six! Rolling in at number six is Moose Tooth Pizza in Anchorage. A pizza parlor is not the first thing I think of when I think of Alaskan food, but these inventive pizzas are not just the best pizzas in Alaska, they're some of the best anywhere. When researching coming to Alaska, this was the one place that kept popping up as a must-eat restaurant. And not just the restaurant, but what exactly to order. So trust me on this. We started with a rich bowl of Hungarian mushroom soup that was comforting and delicious. And as for our wood fire pizza, we went with two. And to be honest, the Call of the Wild pizza was our backup because we didn't trust the one that was so highly recommended. The amazing apricot pizza. Moose Tooth's apricot pizza is blackened chicken, cream cheese, apricot sauce, mozzarella, cilantro, and covered in carrots. Sounds kooky dukes, but it is an absolute must. So we got the Call of the Wild pizza, and the apricot pizza. Apricot pizza, my new favorite pizza. I know it sounds crazy and bizarro, but it is freaking delicious. Number five. Next on our list is wild caught Alaskan salmon. Salmon gets a number five spot on this list because no one place stood out as the best. We ordered it often and prepared all different ways. So bottom line is, when in Alaska, eat Alaskan salmon. Salmon here eat a diverse and nutrient-rich diet that gives it that rich red color and makes it so healthy and so yummy. Number four. 
Next stop, we head back to the beautiful riverside town of Talkeetna, where we have eaten our way through the local cuisine. Number four on our list brings us to the West Rib Pub and Grill. The West Rib is named after one of the more difficult routes to the summit of Mount Denali, and we are here to split the Seward's Folly Burger. Upon arrival, we find this monstrous caribou burger weighs in at five pounds, so to give our arteries a break, we go with the half order. What are we supposed to do with this? What do we order? This is the Seward Folly Junior. This is the Junior, the half. The half coming in the Leaning Tower of Burger. That is a caribou burger with ham. And it's ginormous. <laughs> All right, take a bite, Joe. a <laughs> chat. <laughs> I'm calling it. I can't even eat a quarter of this thing. Number six. Outside Anchorage's downtown, in an unassuming strip mall, you'll find Aurora Chocolates. Chef Ingrid was a head chocolatier in Beverly Hills and learned from master chocolatiers in France. She's traveled the world and never seen anything quite like Alaska. Inspired by the beautiful northern lights, Chef Ingrid created Aurora Chocolates. Hand-painted with shiny cocoa butter, these gourmet chocolates are made with fine ingredients with a long list of flavors like lemon ginger, raspberry with rose water, and cherry confit. These gems are the perfect souvenir, that is, if they make it home. Number two! Our next stop has us driving through the Anton Anderson Tunnel, the largest highway tunnel in North America, designed for negative 40 Fahrenheit temperatures and 150 mile per hour winds. Oh, and did I mention, it's one lane, shared by cars and trains traveling in both directions. But we gotta get to our number two spot in Whittier, Alaska, at the Swiftwater Seafood Cafe for their famous fish and chips. This is where fishermen go to eat. All right, so we're having a calamari burger, and then what they are famous for. Hey, watch up here. The half and half, half halibut, half shrimp. That's fantastic. Who is lucky enough to eat that fishy that came from that ocean pulled by those fishermen? Me. You. Is it good fish? Yes. Can you take a bite? Oh, that's a french fry. Take a fishy bite. Take a fishy bite. Oh, that's a big fishy. Mmm. Is it good? What do you expect? A tiny boo that's some halibut. What do you think of the halibut, Marco? Very good. And the mouth. Reeves, you totally missed that. He didn't think about any fried fry. Number one. And our number one brings us back to beautiful Talkeetna for breakfast fit for a climber. I am out front of the roadhouse. This building was built in 1917. 1917 Alaska. Can you imagine? Holy smokes. Um, it's been a place for people to lodge and have a big hearty breakfast forever. Uh, for fur traders and gold miners and, and people looking to climb Denali. We do not plan on climbing Denali today but we will be packing in enough calories today, just in case. <laughs> but their breakfast is world famous. Unfortunately, um, being 2020 in the middle of a pandemic, uh, they have closed their doors to the public. Um, but if you're one of the lucky people staying at the roadhouse like us, uh, you can, um, the breakfast is available to you. So. Once I get my crew up and moving this morning, uh, we'll sit down for some yummy, uh, yummy sourdough pancakes. So after I wrestle my boys out of bed, we walk over to the main lodge and run into the town of Talkeetna's mayor. Mayor Denali is a long-haired cat. That's right, their mayor is a cat. And we stop for a friendly visit. The Roadhouse is an institution for breakfast. The walls are covered in memorabilia of adventurers. There are climbing banners and newspaper clippings and dollars from around the world. The Roadhouse serves massive portions of breakfast food. Guests enjoy sourdough hotcakes made with a sourdough starter that dates back to 1902. 
Our hotcakes are dotted with wild berries and smothered in birch syrup and served with a side of eggs, bacon, and reindeer sausage. This is the best. Here, For more unique travel shows, like and subscribe to see where Doodlebug goes next.